Greetings, loving friends. Welcome to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. Dr. Bruce Lipton is an internationally recognized authority from the United States on the connection between science and the spirit. Dr. Lipton is the author of several books, including The Biology of Belief, Unleashing the Power of Consciousness, Matter, and Miracles. By training, he is an expert in cell biology and is a former medical school professor and research scientist. His research work in the 1980s at the prestigious Stanford University, USA, showed that the outer layer or membrane of our cells is the equivalent of our brain. By processing information from the outside environment, the cell's brain can affect changes inside the cell. He has found scientific evidence demonstrating that our beliefs manifest themselves at the level of the cells in our bodies. Dr. Lipton says that by modifying these beliefs, we have the power to fundamentally change our lives for the better. Last week, we brought you part one of Dr. Lipton's fascinating talk entitled, Nature, Nurture, and the Power of Love, which concerns conscious parenting or how parents can set the best possible foundation for a child's future. Now, we will present more highlights from his lecture in part two of our program. Parenting is a way of life. The new biology reveals we are very, very personally responsible. We really should be understanding how we incorporate ourselves in the, in the community of nature, not to dominate nature, but how to participate in the community. And this is also the effort of understanding about parenting because we are a community of people. Here, Dr. Lipton analyzes the consequences of living in fear and how important it is for organisms to grow in a stable environment. When you're in protection, you cannot grow. Cells in protection close themselves off. So the more fear you're in, the more you shut your system down. The more you shut your system down, the less growth. And growth is not just from a neonate to an adult. A growth uh, behavior is required every day of your life for the simple reason. Every day of your life, you're losing millions and billions of your cells. If you don't replace them, after a short period of time, the attrition will cause a breakdown of the mechanism and disease. The more fear that you live in, the more protection you hold, the less growth you express, and the more susceptible you are now for disease. Because what have you done? Shut down the system. Everybody needs to grow every day. In the modern world, stress is all around. But how does stress influence children in general? Dr. Lipton says that stress, especially exam stress, may actually hurt children's intellectual development. So you shut down growth. That's the first thing you do when you get under stress. The system knows this. Those stress hormones cause the immune system to shut itself off. We live in a stressful world out there. But what does that mean when you're under stress? You shut off your own immune system. That's when you start to get sick fast. If you're running away from a lion, stressful adrenal system, are you going to use executive reasoning and logic or are you going to use hindbrain reflex behavior? You engage in reflex behavior, not thinking. Point, when you're under stress, you're less intelligent. And the world, we are becoming less intelligent as a group because of the stresses that we're under. We're not thinking clearly. In school, we call it exam stress. Exam stress, try to think of an answer. You can't because the answer comes from reasoning and logic. And when you're under exam stress, all you're thinking about is running out of the exam room going, ah! <laughs> and so right away, you're not working on logic. And so the point is, what happens to us when we live in this world under stress? We shut off our growth, we shut off our immune system, and we shut down our intelligence. As a group, as a population, as a nation, we really haven't been given the proper parenting skills to really understand how to do parenting. And therefore, to try and blame yourself for parenting issues without having proper teaching in this area also means well, there is no blame. I want to try to tell you is that, first of all, parenting, there, it's not a list of things to do, and I'm not going to provide a list of things to do. Once you see how the cells actually work, all of a sudden you say, oh my goodness, our belief in things like genes controlling biology and all this other stuff is not accurate at all. There's a new understanding, and what's really wonderful about it, it is really fully empowering. The Human Genome Project was an initiative sponsored by the U.S. government with the key goal of identifying all the genes of human DNA. 10, 12 years of this Human Genome Project, and in 2001, the results are released, and what are they? 
The answer is not 140,000 genes as anticipated. The answer is 34,000 genes. In the issue of the uh, Human Genome Project in Nature, a Nobel laureate, David Baltimore, uh, he is the uh, uh, geneticist and a Nobel Prize winning geneticist at that, very prominent in the world, had a special article in the issue of Nature describing the results of the Human Genome Project. And in the conclusion of his results, this is what he writes. But unless the human genome contains a lot of genes that are opaque to our computers, it is clear that we do not gain our undoubted complexity over worms and plants by using more genes. Please stay tuned for more from Dr. Bruce Lipton's lecture, Nature, Nurture, and the Power of Love, after these brief messages. You are watching Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality. Today we are featuring excerpts from a talk entitled Nature, Nurture, and the Power of Love, given by Dr. Bruce Lipton, an expert on cell biology and an internationally recognized authority on the connection between science and the spirit. In this part of the lecture, Dr. Lipton will explain the interplay of the subconscious and conscious mind in human development. Also, he discusses how a child's intelligence is affected by their prenatal or even preconception environment. We acquire uh, instincts from genetics and learned habits are stored in the subconscious. And the third level of perception is the conscious mind, which is creative, which is different than the subconscious mind, which is just learned habits. The conscious mind can create new ones. So the conscious mind is really important. The imprints were laid down just before the fertilization. So it's the attitudes of the parents within the few months before that conception that are selecting an imprint that will determine some very fundamental shapes and characters of their future baby. This brain is half the size of that brain. 50% of a child's intelligence can be determined by the prenatal environment and preconception environment. You can shortchange a child's intelligence 50% by living in fear. Conscious pregnancy. It's a very important understanding. So what's going on during the pregnant period between the parents is totally influencing the expression of this child and the future of this child. So rather than our belief that the mother is just providing nutrients, we must add this important fact, she provides information. She provides information about the environment. We're now beginning to realize that the prenatal environmental conditions profoundly change the physiology and development of the child. A new analysis shows that genetic influences may be weaker and prenatal environmental influences greater than previously appreciated. It has now been demonstrated that intelligence is approximately 48% determined by genes, 52% determined by environment. Meaning, in a completely toxic, noxious environment, you can shortchange the intelligence of your child 50% just by your responding to that environment. How does a newborn baby feel and learn? How does the brain develop in the first few years? From before birth to two years of age, a child will express predominantly delta activity, which is very low frequency brain activity. When we express that, we're essentially sleeping or not being conscious, okay? And it doesn't mean the child's unconscious, like knocked out. The child is totally present, but not engaged in what's going on. It's seeing it, observing it, and downloading it, but doesn't like interfere with the download, doesn't say, gee, that was a good behavior, that was bad behavior. It just watches you and learns the behavior. It's not being consciously involved in the learning. Subconsciousness is not consciousness. Consciousness is creative. Subconsciousness are tapes. Where did you get the tapes? Huh. Your subconscious was programmed before birth up through six years of age without you even being involved. You learn tapes about how to live. After you get past six, this development of the prefrontal cortex region here, which is where our central source of consciousness comes from, self-consciousness, self-reflection, is an add-on, really. And as a matter of fact, it's an option. A lot of people in this world don't even use consciousness. <laughs> the reason is you don't need it. Once you learn the program, it's just repetition. 
When you are not paying attention to your own consciousness, you are playing tapes that are not even yours. And you don't even see it because the subconsciousness works imperceptibly. It's so fast that it doesn't even engage consciousness. Finally, Dr. Lipton talks about awareness and community living, which are spiritual in nature. When you live in a community, you share awareness. You might only be able to have one on your own, but when you live with 15 others, you get to share their awareness. So the purpose of coming together in a community was to expand awareness. Whether it's a single cell coming into a cellular community or a single human coming into a human community, it's the same evolutionary drive. More awareness, greater survival. In community, cells defer their own intelligence to follow the central voice. In other words, a community cannot exist if every member in the community does what they want to do. A community exists because we work together for a common goal and a common end. So there's a commonality to the thing, a plan that we're all following, a central voice. We would like to extend our appreciation to Dr. Bruce Lipton for providing his insights on child development and parenting, and for reminding us that above all, love is the most important element in life. Thank you, our caring and intelligent viewers, for joining us on this edition of Science and Spirituality. Now please stay tuned for Words of Wisdom next, after Noteworthy News, here on Supreme Master Television. May all children be blessed by heaven and reach their full potential. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash is is.